Uh, good evening. I hereby to call to order the April 22nd, 2020 meeting of the Gaithersburg Historic District Commission. Uh, for the record, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this meeting is being remotely telecast. And as this is our first time doing so, please bear with any of the bumps in the road that we encounter. Uh, for any of us who will be speaking tonight, Please talk slowly and uh, avoid talking over one another. Uh, next then is our roll call. So for our roll call, uh, please say uh, present when I call your name, uh, starting with uh, Deputy City Attorney Frank Johnson. Present. Okay. Community Planning Lead, uh, Greg Mann. Present. Uh, Planner 2 and HDA, uh, HDC Liaison, Chris Berger. Present. Okay. Uh, Commissioner and Vice Chairman John Roddy. Present. Uh, Commissioner Mary Jo LaFrance. Present. Uh, Commissioner Mark Feinstein. Present. Um, and Commissioner Rudy Morgan. Present. Uh, and myself, Commissioner and Chairman B. Ventola says present. Okay, next then um, is our preliminary statement which is as follows. Uh, this commission is empowered to meet and act under Article 12 of the City Code of Gaithersburg. The technical qualifications of the staff of this commission and the members of the commission are on file with the City of Gaithersburg, are available on request to any applicant, and are hereby made a part of the legal record of each and every application heard today. Each application heard today is considered on its own merits uh, and is not to be considered as establishing a precedent for any other application. Um, next is that uh, I'd like to mention or state that Commissioner Morgan's role tonight is as full commissioner. Um, next is conflicts of interest. So does anyone have any conflicts of interest for any application being heard tonight? If so, uh, just raise your hand and say something to, to notify us, like I have a conflict or I'd like to make a declaration. Anyone? John Roddy? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a statement and it may not be uh absolutely necessary as it deals with the fifth item on the agenda that it being the courtesy review of SP 8320. Uh, I would like to say that I live about a block away from the, uh, the property that's in question. And as you will remember, I was not in favor of the demolition that uh, we approved uh, about a, two years ago on that site. Uh, I don't think that's going to affect it, my viewpoint in any way in this case. Okay, then um, please, you're welcome to join, obviously. Anyone else have any conflicts of interest that they would like to declare or uh, Steve? Okay, I see no one else, very good, all right. Um, okay, next is uh, we have me, um, uh, one set of minutes and it is uh, from our past January 29th meeting. Uh, does any commissioner have any corrections or additions to the meeting, to the minutes, excuse me? If so, please raise your hand and say aye or say something that you'd like to make some justice. Yes, Mary Jo. I do not have any additional, I do not have any additional information. I just wanted to disclose that I have uh, watched the, um, the presentation on the computer of the meeting and I also read the minutes so I will be voting tonight as it has been certified that the meeting oh, I see. Fact you're, saying you weren't, you're saying you weren't present at the meeting but you did review uh, online okay very yes. good. all right all right anyone else have any uh, concerns with the minutes as they're written I see no one ha no hands okay um, so then what I like to do is just simply call for a, um, a motion to adopt the minutes I so move Okay, anyone second? Second. Okay. All right, so let's just all say aye if you are um, in favor. Aye. 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 All right, aye. anyone? Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, I heard. Um, anyone opposed or uh, say nay, or is anyone going to abstain? No. So did I miscount? So do we have uh, five, two, zero for um, approving the minutes? Is that, is, everybody raise your hand if you approve yes. the minutes, please. Okay, so that's five, zero. Okay, very good. All right, next then is we have um, one historic work area permit. 
which is HIST-8458-2020, uh, which is the ventilation grates in front gable at 124 East Diamond Avenue in the city, which is the central business district zone. Um, may we have an introduction from staff? Yeah. My name is Damon Henderson with Brax Roofing. I'm sorry? My name is Damon Henderson with Brax Roofing. Okay, thank you, welcome. Um, what we're going to do right now is, if we can, um, let me turn it over to um, Chris Berger to give us the introduction. Yes, and give me just a moment. Okay, the subject property is located at 124 East Diamond Avenue in the CBD Central Business District Zone. If the tech team can show page 12 in the packet. It's individually designated as historic and is traditionally known as the exchange building. The application comes before the HDC in accordance with section 24-227A of the city code. If we can move to page 13 of the packet. Here is the front facade of the building. The applicant has submitted a historic area work permit application requesting the HDC approve the installation of vents in the front roof gable. If we can move to page 14. And here is a closer look at that vent on the front elevation. And if we can go to page 15. And here is what the applicant proposes for the vent. Based on the dimensions provided by the applicant, the pitch of the front gable is six and a half over 12. And if we can go to page 16 of the packet, please. The new vented gable will approximately match the existing vented gable at the rear of the building seen in these photos here. This rear addition was built in the late 1980s. The historic district guidelines for the Brooks Russell and Walker Historic District and individually designated sites apply. They note for materials that the historic character of a property shall be retained and preserved. The removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize a property shall be avoided. The guidelines also note under painting that all trim should be painted or stained. As for staff's recommendation, staff supports installation of the vents in the front gable end. The vent should improve ventilation in the attic and provide better air circulation and extend the lifespan of the roof. The installation will minimally affect the building's appearance, but the general scale of the front gable will be maintained and the vents will be compatible with the exchange building's overall design. Staff seeks a condition that the installed vent slats match the width of the slants found on the rear elevation. While the rear slats are not original to the building's construction, they provide a precedent staff contends should be matched with the proposed. The plans for the vent in the front gable appear to show the removal of the existing trim pattern for a simpler design. Thus, staff seeks the condition that the existing trim pattern at the front gable is maintained. And finally, staff seeks a condition that the slats and framing are primed and painted in conformance with the design guidelines. And Damon Henderson of Brax Roofing is available to answer any questions. So welcome, Damon. Thank you. Okay, um, welcome. And Damon, um, would you like to say anything um, further um, than what's already been spoken about? Uh, no, we don't have any problem with leaving the framing and leaving it, leaving it as it is and just installing the slats. Uh, we, we can do that, no problem. Okay. Um, for the record, uh, regarding the public's turn to speak, which is, would come next, uh, I understand that no one had requested to speak by today's 2 p.m. deadline, so there will be no, um, um, people from the public, um, putting in their thoughts for or against this, um, proposal. Okay, next then is let's hear from the commission on their questions and thoughts. So when I call your name, please state your thoughts and questions, um, for the applicant. Um, so I'm going to be consistent um, going from start to finish. And so um, let's start with Commissioner Roddy. Um, your thoughts and your questions. Uh, I have no questions. Uh, I have no problem with the uh, proposal. Uh, 
as conditioned by staff. Okay, very good, thank you. Uh, Commissioner LaFrance? Yes, I wanted everyone to know that I had spent some time after receiving the packet studying Italian Renaissance styles. And I feel that even though this gable has might have lost some of its details, one thing that is consistent with Italian Renaissance is formality. And I surmising based on the images I saw online, that this may have been a simple half sun pattern at one time. And I was hoping that because it is at the front of the building, I understand consistency with the rear, but the rear would not have been a formal entrance and it's not as important as the front. And so, although I wasn't able to figure out how to add to tonight's meeting uh, an example from the internet, I did make a very simple drawing, hoping that the new vent would incorporate the half circle design and understanding that the levers would need to be horizontal to prevent rain or wind from coming in. I came up with this crude drawing as an example of something I would like the applicant to consider as the design for this project. Uh, could you explain then for us, Mary Jo? Um, I believe that the um, half round, you can, you can take it down now. I believe that Thank the you. half round is the, are the vents. Um, the horizontal lines and the half round are the vents. Are the horizontal lines that fill up the rest of the triangle vents also, or would that be a panel? I believe it should be in the sense of getting as much ventilation as possible. Um, it just seemed to make sense. Would it be nice to have the sun pattern and the vent venting around that? Sure. But that would probably interfere with the ventilation they're trying to receive at this time. So that's why I went with this idea. Um, Brian and Tech, could you please pull up page 14? Okay, page 14 is not the page 14 I had. There we go. Okay, and I wanted just to refresh all of our memories quickly. I realize this is a small gable, but you can see that I'm trying, I'm hoping to incorporate um, this design into what comes next. Because I believe that it's appropriate for the style of the home and again, the formality. And I would hate to lose a nice architectural detail in the process. Um, Brian, please pull up page 15. This is currently what we're looking at. I don't know if any of you noticed it, but when we saw the rear view, uh, it was quite startling almost. But yeah, again, that was an 80s edition. Uh, Brian, please pull up page 16. And you see the lower photograph here. You see how bold that is. Um, again, it's on the rear, no matter. I'm suggesting the half round because I think it softens the uh, architectural detail and is appropriate based on what is there. Okay, do you want to continue or are you? Or I'm you sorry, I, I need to pause for just a second here to see. Take your time. I, I didn't know if you were done yet. Yeah. Please take your time. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, thank you for the images, Brian. We come back to the regular photos of everybody. Um, just like I said, distinct features, possibly recreate them. I think that um, that would, in the long run, benefit the property and our city. And we did agree that the material for the vents was going to be wood. I just want to verify that. Yes, yes correct. Yes. Thank you. And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Feinstein? 
Uh, hi, yes, I had uh, one question for the applicant. Um, kind of piggybacking on what Commissioner LeBron said, um, was any thought given to keeping the gable in the front as is and putting a, a vented gable on either side of the, um, of the building? Uh, no, actually, no. We, that is something we can't look into. Uh, this, this came about from the owner of the building. He, he insisted, he was the one that wanted the, ven uh, the ventilation put in there. But we can most definitely go back to him and see if we can come up with something else if you guys want to keep that, that piece in, intact. Yeah, because I'm not a, I think the ventilation is a good thing for the roof. I think that's appropriate, um, right. especially if summer coming. Um, but um, I was just thinking if there's an, a way we can maintain that front facade and still get the ventilation required for the, uh, for the attic. I think uh, you, I don't know. I mean, he has, we, we, we just replaced the roof probably a couple months ago. He does have a ventilation system on the top of the roof. So he actually doesn't need to put this on as for aesthetics is from, from my understanding. For the vent, sir, for aesthetics? Correct. He doesn't need to put it on. Huh. He's one put it on to match the back. That is very good information. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I'm so sorry. I interjected. Please continue. Uh, no, you, you got the same thoughts I did. Um, <laughs> if, if it's if you already have a ventilation system on the roof, and yeah, the roof looks like it's yeah, it looks like it's pretty new. Um, yeah. I just don't. I don't quite get it then, because obviously you're matching a 1980s edition um, versus the original um, gable that's kind of works with the, the front facade. So that changes my opinion on, on how to, how to kind of roll with this. Um, Is that uh, anything further? No, that's, that's what I got. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Um, Commissioner Morgan. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, um, Mark just just kind of kind of changed my opinion because <laughs> he asked the question. I mean, is this aesthetic or this is functional? Uh, exactly, this is aesthetic, right? And right. the vent on the back, the vent on the back. If you turn up, if you alter that vent to mimic what is on the front, will it affect the functioning of the ventilation system on the roof? That, that's a no. question for the... Uh, let me interject, let me interject, uh, Rudy. I want to interject. Um, yeah. We, as a commission, are only uh, allowed to address things before us. That is, the question, the issue in question is the front gable. Uh, mm -hmm. The back gable exists, and although you can make statements that you like or dislike it, that's okay, but we can't require them to do anything to it. So it's okay. not on the table tonight. Okay, all right. So, so having said that, if the, the, the vent on the front of the gable on the front and your request to, 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 to alter that, to install a ventilation, ventilation system, if it's not required, can we just re retain the actual existing profile as it is? Correct. That's, that's, that's the next question. Okay. Um, yeah, that's correct. I think I have more, I have more question and comment, so I I I just leave it as it is. That's all I have for it, now. Okay, you can continue to ask questions if you still have questions. No more questions. Not, not okay. The next question is, where is the, the ventilation ventilation system that you have right now on top of the roof? Can, can, do you it's have it graphically? Can I can we it's can I take a look? Is it part of the document? It's it, there's the uh, roof is mansard. It's a flat roof. I don't think it's here. Is it part of this presentation? No. No. Okay. All right. So if, the next if, question I if have. I, if I may interject. I, on page 18, if the tech team can show page 18, it's an aerial that shows the roof. Yeah, well, yeah. you can see it. There, there, I guess. 
So right at 124, Rudy. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the the flat roof that I understand the ventilation system is on. Um, All right. Is, Mr. Henderson, is that correct? Correct, sir. Yes. Okay. So essentially, and Rudy, this is aesthetic. He's looking to add something aesthetic to the front elevation to make it look more like the back elevation. That's all they're asking for. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other thoughts uh, before we move to the next? Well, I would I would say that if if based on the application and based on the comments and recommendation from the staff, I will concur with the staff that the applicant can move ahead and do this. But again, it's up to it's up to the applicant if they want to spend this money to go ahead and and retrofit. The front gate, but you can go ahead and do that, but it's up to them. But okay. in so essence, you're... I concur, concur okay. with the staff recommendation. Okay, very good. All right. Um, I'm next and last. Um, there's no question that roofs need to be ventilated. Um, we all know uh, that the excess heat will build up and destroy a, an attic, but that's not the issue at hand. The issue at hand is aesthetic. The, the ventilation has already been handled according to testimony from the applicant that um, this is really just an aesthetic issue uh, from, um, from start to finish. Based on that, there is no way I would ever vote to remove a historic element to put up something that is um, non-historic. There's no reason for it. Um, the current detail of the front gable with the arch in it is a very nice and graceful detail to begin with, and there's no reason to remove it um, for the function of the building. So to me, there are very few decisions that come across our table that uh, are so cut and dry or black and white to me. This is one of them. There was no way I would uh, vote to remove that uh, detail to replace it with an aesthetic uh, detail, which by the way, I don't think is as nice as what's there now. I don't like the one on the rear elevation at all. That 1212 pitch sure. looks really rough, but that's, oh, yeah. that's not our purview. Um, so, Absolutely not for me. Um, all right, so before we go to the voting, does anybody have any other thoughts they want to throw in um, before we go for a vote? Can I ask the tech team to show yes, page sir. 26 of the packet? Page 26, please. And this is the application in which the uh, representative from Brax Roofing said that the property had ventilation issues on the attic space due to the yeah. design yeah. and the new gable will improve the ventilation. So that was what was brought to staff. Yeah. So there's some confusion as to uh, Mr. Henderson's testimony that okay. it's for aesthetics, because this is news to us. That's a good point, uh, Chris. Very good point. But um, I believe that uh, Mr. Henderson uh, appeared to be um, clear about it. Um, is there any doubt in your mind, Mr. Henderson, that the roof has been properly ventilated? No, no it's doubt. Properly okay. okay, all right, good. Um, all right, thank you for that, Chris. Um, so next then, is there anyone else before we go to a vote who uh, wants to say anything further? May I, may I please? Yes. May yes, I please, please just make a suggestion for the applicant's benefit. If we could get the applicant to agree to maybe wait and bring this back before us next month and get him to think it over, I think that would be better then if we make a decision tonight. Chris Berger, what do you think? I, Commissioner LaFrance, I think that's an excellent idea that the application to defer to have the applicant and the Brax team um, take another look at this and decide if they do want to go forward. And perhaps if they do want just a roof for aesthetic reasons, it can be redesigned to better reflect the design of the front facade. Um, okay. Is everyone all right with that? Well, sure, but let me interject that I would I don't see that changing my vote. Um, um, just so you know in advance, I would never replace uh, a beautiful aesthetic piece of architecture with a new aesthetic piece of architecture. Uh, to me, there's no reason for it. The historicity is, is there, um, and the um, 
design, I think, is, is quite nice. So that won't change my opinion, but that is a projection, uh, speculation. Uh, I will review anything that you bring before us in next month with an open mind. Okay. I, um, I have one more thing to sir. say. Yes, now, given that statement on the application, I, my suggestion, I feel that it's very imperative that the contractor, the roofing contractor, makes sure to have cross ventilation. It, 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 you have to have cross, but to, 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 to expand the lifespan of the roof. And, 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 and also the occupant in the space, because if the roof is not breathing properly, it affects the inside of the building as well. So it's imperative that the, the roofing contractor or the owner of the building come up with some, if we're gonna reapply, at a, come up with something alternative, if we're gonna keep that gable on the front. Well, that, that's all very well and good. And I agree with that. But from what we understand from the applicant, that it has been properly ventilated. Um, so if they come back next month and say it is not properly ventilated, um, that would be a change in information that we have right now. And then we can consider it at that point. Okay, so how do we uh, well, set this aside? I, I would say somebody make a motion to defer to next week. Um, I'm sorry, to next month's meeting. But I, and I make not motion. to interrupt, but I would suggest if you're making a motion, it's going to be helpful to raise your hand so that the chair can see you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I make a motion that we defer HIST 8458 to next month's meeting. Okay, anybody second? Please raise your hand. Okay, seconded. All right, so all those in favor, um, what I'll do is uh, give a roll call. Um, that is, you're in favor of deferring. So, Commissioner Roddy? I'm in favor of deferring. Okay. Commissioner LaFrance? Aye. All right. Commissioner Feinstein? Aye. Commissioner Morgan? Aye. And myself is aye. All right, so um, it's five to zero, and the ayes have it. So we're deferred to the next meeting, which we assume will be next month. Um, Mr. Henderson, if you can confirm that it is properly ventilated, um, that would be very helpful. Okay. If, if you confirm that it's not, please bring us the information to prove that it's not, because um, okay. I truly don't think that I want to wreck a historic element if we don't have to. And by the way, um, I came to this meeting with two suggestions that I guess didn't need to be done because it was already done. <laughs> and both of them were from Mark. So congratulations, Mark. I was thinking, um, vent them from the top um, answer, the flat roof part, you wouldn't see it. The second thing is to have the gable ends um, um, have um, the new vents put on those leave the front one alone um it would that's the most prominent and it's the most architecturally significant and mary joe pointed out the arch which is so elegant and rare because it's hard to do we hate to see that to be gone so um if you prove or bought in your research that there is proof to yourself that there is no proper ventilation i would think that we would i know i would probably suggest then to have uh, the gable, uh, cross gable on the sides, like Mark suggests, which is a great suggestion. Yeah. So those are my thoughts. So does that help you? And are you comfortable with our decision to defer? Yes, sir. Wonderful. Okay. All right. Anybody have anything further before we move on? Yeah, the next? Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Very good. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Next then is um, we have tax credit applications, and that would be H. HIST, the first one, HIST-8464-2020, which is a historic uh, tax credit at 15 Walker Avenue in the R90 medium uh, density residential zone. May we have an introduction from staff, please? Uh, yes. The subject property is located at 15 Walker Avenue in the R90, the medium density residential zone. It is contributing to the Brooks, Russell, and Walker Historic District. Yes. 
Um, the actually the one that's on the screen is 111 Meme Avenue. Yeah, it's that's eight four six one twenty twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. That's true. 111 is up. So, so we um, will move back to um, 111 Meme, which is eight four six one twenty twenty. And the subject property is located in the R90 medium density residential zone. It is non-contributing to the historic Chestnut Meme Historic District. The applicant seeks $975 in tax credits for a roof replacement in February of 2019. The work was not reviewed by the HDC because it was in-kind replacement. If we can go to the next page, page 47. And this is a before photo. The next page, page 48. That's another before photo. And going to page 49, this shows the roof under replacement. And then moving on to page 50. And that's the final product. Are there any questions? Um, well, what we can do is, um, uh, I guess, hit um, each person again um, from the commission. So uh, let's go down the roll and start with Commissioner Roddy. Your thoughts? Um, and yeah, no problem you know. at all with that. That's an in-kind replacement. No brainer. Okay, great. Um, Commissioner LaFrance. Uh, again, no problem. Okay, Commissioner Feinstein. No issues. Commissioner Morgan. No issue. Okay, and uh, I say no, I have no issues as well. All right, so then let's just go to a vote. Um, I would say that, um, well, let's just do it on the roll call. So um, I, uh, please say I uh, when I call, call your name or nay if. Uh, uh, per your vote. If I can, inter if I can interject real quick, we do need a motion. motion. Yes, thank do you. We need thank a motion to certify. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, very good. Thank you. I apologize. Thank you very much. So, can somebody please have a motion to um, certify um, this tax credit? Yes, sir. Uh, Mark? I move okay. that the Historic District Commission certify that HIST. 8461-2020 is eligible for participation in the Montgomery County Historic Preservation Tax Credit Program. Wonderful, second? Second. All right, um, I would say let's just do a roll call just so we have it on record. So, uh, Commissioner Roddy, are you in favor of it? Aye. All right, Commissioner wolf Aye. Uh, Commissioner Feinstein? Aye. Commissioner Morgan? Aye. All right, and I say aye, so that's five two zero. It passes. Very good. Thank you very much. All right. Um, next, then we go back to um, the fifteen Walker Avenue, and so that would be HIST eighty four sixty four dash twenty twenty, which is historic tax credit at fifteen Walker Avenue in the R ninety medium density residential zone. Uh, may we have introduction from staff, please? Yes, the subject property is located at 15 Walker, as you said, in the R90 medium density residential zone. It's contributing to the Brooks, Russell, and Walker Historic District. The applicant seeks $3,226.89 in credits for two projects, the replacement of the roof on the house and installation of gutters, and the replacement of the front porch. The applicant said he was forced to replace his roof on his house after an emergency leak and hired the same roof contractor to install the gutters on the house and garage. On November 21st, 2019, the HDC approved HIST 8349 2019 for the retroactive approval of the gutters installed on the garage. The porch project was completed by the applicant himself. Uh, staff removed some items from the applicant's application for the porch project because they were not cost eligible for the credits. And first we have photos of the, um, the roof and gutter work, the before photos. If we can go to page 66, please. And that's how the front, or that's how the uh, rear of the house looked. If we can go to page 67. 
here's what the gutter and the roof look like. And if we can go to page 68. Here is the project underway from the backyard. If we can go to page 69. And here is the completed project from the front. If we can go to page 70. And here's the rear of the house with the new roof. Um, page 71, please. That's, that, that's the original tag. And this is the porch, just as work um, got underway. As you can see the rotten floorboards. If we can go to page 72. And this is the porch project underway. As I said, the applicant did the work himself. And page 73, please. And here he is about finishing the project. And 74 is the last photo showing the finished project. And there it is. Does anyone have any questions? Well, no, um, uh, but we can go um, and start our round robin. Um, and I guess in both, oh, here we go, Mary Jo. Okay, so uh, Brian, could you please pull up 71? Page 71, thank you. Okay, and then next, would you please pull up page 74? Thank you. Okay, so my question is, the decking that he used to replace the previous decking with doesn't look like the same width to me. And I'm also concerned, is that pressure treated? And I understand that typically we would ask the applicant to paint not only the deck, but the exposed ends. Chris, could you please tell me where that project is now? Um, I, would, I would have to go by there to see if he did in fact end up painting it. Um, I can't recall if he, re if he um, applied for a credit for painting. He may be waiting to do that in 2020. But yeah. as far as pressure treated versus regular wood, that wouldn't be something that we would uh, bring to the commission if he were okay. to replace it from from natural to pressure treated wood. Um, you know, I, I highly doubt that the the wood that he replaced was original to the house, which was probably built in the 1920s. So it certainly wasn't necessarily a the original wood. Well, I understand that as having a wraparound front porch myself, but typically we would encourage an applicant to use the same width. Uh, so that it was replaced in kind. So that's where my question is, is this really in kind? Um, if you would like to, in case I can get information from the applicant. And I would really appreciate it because this is one of those things where we try to get the details right. But thank you, that's my only question. Okay, um, anyone else? Um, I can go. Um, down the list, if you guys like. Um, yes, sir, Mr. Morgan. I think it's fresh from from the look of the wood. It's pressure treated. The question is, and I agree with Mary, that if you're replacing such in, uh, such in kind, you want to maintain the profile of the existing material as much as possible, uh, and it has to be painted to at least match the color of the existing material. Um, so I, 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 I would like to see the finished product from what we're looking at now. Is, is there an updated photo or was this taken immediately after the project was done? I don't know. But I, I think we need, we need a follow-up uh, update 
on what the project looks like now. Okay, um, anyone else want to speak? Uh, uh, John or Mark? Uh, I'll uh, yes, bifurcate my uh, comments. I think with regard to the uh, roof and the uh, gutters, that part I have no problem with at all. Those are essential to the integrity of the unit, the, the house. With regard to the uh, the porch, I think uh, Mary Jo and uh, Rudy have uh, very good uh, points. I think what looks like it was ripped up was a two and a quarter inch tug and groove, uh, probably fir or spruce. <coughs> And we're looking at something uh, somewhat different, although I, I don't want to rule on it until we hear from uh, the applicant as to what has actually been installed and whether or not it's been painted, of course, is another consideration. <coughs> yes, sir, Mark. Yeah, that was my question to Frank, I guess, is um, procedure-wise, procedure do we uh, defer that last piece? Um, until we get further understanding of what what the what the actual material is, and just rule on the first two pieces of the of the application, or do we defer everything? Well, from a legal point of view, you can you can what you're doing here is indicating it meets the guidelines for certification. Um, you certainly can to the extent you're comfortable, and defer the rest of it. But I would. Um, look to Chris to see what his thought is on the preference because I'm assuming the applicant wants to put in an application for the uh, for the entire credit so practically I don't know if there's a benefit one way or another but yes you could certify to the extent you're comfortable with it or indicate it's eligible for certification is technically what you're doing I think the preference would be to defer the application because if you were to approve only a part of that, they would need to come forward with a separate um, tax credit application for just the porch. And so it may be preferable just to do everything at once with one application. So they still have plenty of time. Usually we say the cutoff is the May meeting, but in conversations with the county finance office, they don't really wow. start looking at these applications until July. So in effect, we could actually go to a June meeting if necessary. Thank you. That makes sense. Okay, uh, anybody have any further thoughts? Because it sounds like we're going to um, make a motion or go towards um, deferring it. Does that sound correct, everybody? Okay, so would somebody like to make a motion to defer this? Before we do, let me ask this one question. Um, for the big picture issue, if this is not replacing kind, is there anything that should take place? Uh, we are really only voting, uh, considering the certification for the tax credits, but is the the flooring itself an, an issue for the city. Um, do we do what? Do you guys want to discuss that at all? Do we care uh, as an HDC that uh, it needs to be addressed or not by the city? What are your thoughts, anybody? Well, to me, the question is, it's not if it's not really replaced in kind and i know it's fudgy because okay it was it's wood but then you could say that if the planks were 12 inches wide then what would we say that you understand i don't, I don't well, understand I agree, the I agree with but, that. Yeah. but i think your, your your point actually emphasizes to me that if it was 12 inches it would be so far into what was there so the real question, I guess, is what's there? Uh, um, is it, it's not a duplicate, but it, but is it acceptable to us? Um, Chris, did they bring any information to you ahead of time for what the planks they're gonna be using uh, would be? Because if they did, then I think we gotta let them keep it. They did not, no. Oh, okay. Right. Now this was something that Harry homeowner, excuse me, I don't remember the gentleman's name, did himself and i could understand the confusion on his part too but i still he, feel he, like we i, I to did talk about i did uh i did notice he was doing this work when i drove by his house one day and, and contacted him and he 
said that he was replacing everything in kind. I just confirmed that email. So I do have that email that says he was doing everything in kind. So we'll confirm that he actually did do that. Yeah. Yes, please. Thank you. So I guess, um, I'm so sorry, please go ahead. I'm sorry, I was doing your job. I was just going to ask <laughs> you to make a motion. I love that. So, <laughs> so my question is to Chris and Frank, um, is there something that the city needs to um, deal with on this or not? Do you want our thoughts today or not? Or do we just defer um you know the, the the voting till next next time what do you guys what do you, what do you guys think i guess start with frank what do you think well i would I, I don't know if uh chris has a preference but if you're asking in terms of whether a permit was required i mean that's not before you right now i think staff could take a look at that but the main question on the tax credit it's a question really that's what's before you right uh, Okay. You defer part or all, and as part of that, I think staff are certainly, and the records indicating uh, some question as to what happened, and those facts can certainly be brought forth as well. Okay, very good, um, Chris. Before we go to a motion, uh, do you have any other thoughts on that? No, I'll just. Uh, I agree with Frank. I'll we'll see, review and see if a retroactive historic area work permit is necessary. Okay. Yeah. Well, Frank is absolutely correct. The only thing before us tonight is the certification. So, uh, can somebody please give a motion to defer to the next meeting? I so move we do defer the entirety to the next meeting. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Let me go through the roll. Um, Commissioner Roddy, aye to defer. Aye. Okay. Commissioner Olfranc, aye to defer. Aye. Commissioner Feinstein, aye to defer. Aye. Commissioner Morgan, aye to defer. Aye. Okay, and I say aye as well. So that's five two zero to defer. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right. Next then is uh, we have our courtesy review, which is uh, SP. 8320-2019, uh, the Curtis Review of 102 to 104 uh, South Frederick Avenue in the CD Carter Development Zone. Uh, may we have introduction from staff? Good evening. Uh, this is a courtesy review of the properties located at 102 and 104 South Frederick Avenue. Its application comes before the HDC. The properties are located in the Observatory Heights Courtesy Review Area. And can I actually have a presentation up? Can I have the next slide, please? As you can see here on the screen, uh, the property is located at the corner of Cedar Avenue and South Frederick Avenue and is zone CD. Uh, so pursuant to section 22-227.4, the HEC may review and make recommendations to the Planning Commission on applications for site development approvals. The applicant is requesting to construct a new two-story, 6,000 square foot office building. The HCC held a courtesy review for this building um, on May 22nd of 2019 when I uh, was going through the concept site plan uh, review process. The Planning Commission reviewed this application during their regular April 15th, uh, 2020 meeting. And due to the governor's emergency orders prohibiting public gatherings, the meeting was conducted virtually. Uh, for this reason, the Planning Commission is going to hold their record open on this application until 5 p.m. on Thursday, April 23rd to allow the public to submit comments on this application and they will make their final action on May 6 of 2020 and this evening I have Ben Bates and Marty Bates who are the architects and Louis Leon who is the applicant and the property owner uh, so next slide please and I will have Ben Bates the architect is going to go the application with you this evening all right um, could we just um, skip past that entry slide there, please? Um, and actually go to um, page 108, which is the rendered site plan, since we just, Jasmine just touched on that subject there as well. 
I'm sorry, maybe that's 107. <clears throat> 106 is the rendered site plan, my apologies. <coughs> okay, wonderful. Okay, uh, good evening, members of the Historic Di District Commission. Um, thank you for giving us the opportunity to discuss our project with you again um, this evening. So I'd just like to give you a brief refresher of the architectural design strategy, strategy uh, which we applied to this building. Um, and this process involved blending uh, site constraints with the client-driven client pragmatic um, and aesthetic requirements. Uh, it was determined that the proposed program for this law office building would fit within approximately 6,000 square feet. It was also apparent that because this program required 6,000 square feet, the available building footprint would be limited to approximately 2,000 square feet due to parking requirements of the site. Uh, you can see there on that site plan there. Um, the darker toned area is the 2,000 square foot uh, footprint, and then there's a lighter toned area that you see uh, over top of the parking area. Um, so this decision came about um, when we understood that the remaining 4,000 square feet would need to be accommodated on one or two upper floors. Um, certain uh, programmatic elements did fit well on a 2,000 square foot uh, ground floor. Uh, However, it was decided that the three floors of 2,000 square feet would not accommodate the remaining program in such a way as to allow for traditional and flexible office layout. Um, <clears throat> this is where the idea of covering a portion of the parking lot evolved. Uh, this also allowed for the building to be shorter and, and more in line and compatible with the surrounding residential buildings. Um, so you can see there, that's what I was discussing, how the lighter toned area um, is an overhang of the second floor above the parking area. <clears throat> um, aesthetically, the client requested that his building, I'm sorry, um, can we go to the next slide, please? 107. Oops. Sorry, I hit, hit the wrong button there. <laughs> Uh, aesthetically, the client requested that his building convey a sense of permanence, strength, and prestige to his clients, as well as his employees and his neighbors. Uh, the client and the design team agreed to use a federal style for the aesthetic detailing of the building. Uh, coupling the demands of the site and the program with the client's request for a federal style design was a challenge. As you see from the building elevations, three sides of the building are designed following the traditional harmonics and details of the federal style. So just looking there at the front elevation, um, and then if we can go to the next slide, showing the two side elevations. Um, you know, the traditional harmonics uh, being the um, repetitive pattern of the windows, um, symmetrical front and side facades, uh, double hung windows um, in both the horizontal and vertical patterns. Um, a, a clearly defined small porch feature in the front and a decorative but not over embellished cornice with dental blocks. And then if we could go to the last slide there, showing the rear elevation. Okay. So extending the rear of the second floor over a portion of the parking made it difficult to develop um, the rear elevation in a strict federal style. However, we believe the solution shown, which includes changes suggested by the HDC in our previous meeting, works well to blend the traditional style with a pragmatic solution for the parking requirements. And with that, I will um, just like to say thank you and, and open it up for your comments. Wonderful, thank you so much. All right, um, I guess what we could do is go through, since there is no one uh, from the public who will be speaking um, on this, we can go right to the commission. So let's start with uh, Commissioner Roddy and have your thoughts, please, and questions for the applicant. Okay, By the way, welcome, and, and Mr. Leon and Jasmine. I'm so sorry I interrupted you. Uh, no, no, that's quite all right. I was just going to say that I don't pretend to have the artistic uh, sensitivity of uh, many of my colleagues who are architects, but I, I am interested in some of the, uh, the, the legal aspects uh, we encountered the last time there was some discussion of an overlap that I'd like to hear some more about but I in terms of the style I, I like the federal style it's essentially symmetrical and it appeals to the eye I think that so far as I'm concerned that's fine 
But uh, can you tell me if that uh, overlap with the state uh, issue has been resolved? Uh, I'm sorry, are we, are we discussing the overlap with the, um, what overlap are we discussing? There was an overlap, I believe, uh, for the right of way uh, where the sidewalk occurs some four foot to width. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, and Brian, the bus stop. I'm sorry. So I, I will speak on that. So in the master plan, there was a recommendation to dedicate, there's supposed to be 120 foot right of way, especially for the future BRT uh, project. So the project has dedicated, I think it was additional five feet of right of way to the state and put the building site back. Um, so it won't be um, encroaching. Okay, that's fine. That, yeah. that, I'm, I'm cool. Thank you, Jasmine. From, from my memory, I thought the original building was in the conflict, but the new building was not going to be in that right of way. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Okay, so John, uh, more more thoughts before we go elsewhere? No, I'm uh, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. By the way, that's great memory. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> I did too, as well as you can tell, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Commissioner LaFrance. I have more of a uh, just a comment than any questions. Uh, I believe that the uh, federal design there. Uh, complements the other federal buildings that are on Frederick Road by Westview Park. And I think it'll be a nice addition to our city. And I thank you for including our suggestions in your new rendering. And that's it. Okay, Mark. Mark is well, Mark, muted. Mark, um, you're muted. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I don't have any questions. And uh, my only comment is, I think it's a it's a very handsome building, and I appreciate the uh, the modifications you made. I think it, it it looks very nice. Okay, Rudy. Um, I don't have any comments. Um, it's a very handsome building. I agree with John. Um, the only the only question I have. Um, I'm not too clear on the easement in the back of the building and and reducing the size of the building in the back and trying to compensate for more square footage on the second floor by provide for, by doing the overhang and then you have these these columns that come there you know to support that overhang are all columns in the in the easement the no. easement that we spoke of, Rudy, was on the front of the project, right by the, the road. E the easement is in the front. Yeah, it's so not, but the easement is not, not in It's not in the bucket. All right. I just uh, just a clar clarification. Yeah, no, I see where your question is going. No, it has nothing to do with the easement. Uh, they had okay. uh, placing that second story overhanging the first uh, was, I think, more of a parking issue. They needed okay. more parking spaces, okay. but it has nothing to do right. with them setbacks. Okay, so the, the overhand to, to, to maintain uh, um, more parking space based on a requirement, on a parking requirement. That's correct. And, and uh, Ben uh, indicated that the, the rear of the building, I'd like to start the, the federal start, but then on the back, is it's, it's, it's like that that federal style wasn't carried over completely on the back of the building is that is that something that can be enhanced or is just going to remain as it is so Rudy, to answer your question um the plan is for it to remain as is um we did okay. several options for the rear um and with the overhang it's you know it's such a unique um, feature that it really makes it difficult to really fully adhere to any sort of federal style there on the back. Um, you know, carrying over the brick band, um, the same cornice line, um, and, yeah. and finish, um, as well as the double hung windows. Um, and then those windows in the center, you know, we had, in the last time we presented, they were a little bit larger, um, and broke the brick band. So we, 
you know, uh, the comments that we gave that we were given from you guys were really helpful. And, um, you know, we've, we've uh, made those window windows more in scale with the other windows, um, and continued that brick band. So, um, I think those elements, although while not, tr not fully a federal style, um, that, those are the elements we uh, maintained. Okay. All right. It's understood. Uh, overall, it's, it's a very elegant building. Just looking at it, I love bricks. I mean, it's, you can't go wrong with that. It's very <laughs> elegant. Yeah. Okay, Thank that's you. it. Rudy? Okay. That's it. All right. Okay, very good. All right, I'll go next and last. Um, can you put up kindly um, slide 108, I think? It's the side elevation. Okay, good. Um, can I ask on the right hand elevation or the right hand on the drawing, um, the, that door is the door, yeah. a functioning door? Yeah, so, um, so that door there um, is a egress only door from the fire stair uh, from the second mm. floor. Um, we that had been sense. working with uh, trying to figure out the best way to address that on the exterior. Um, and, and just so you know, our previous um, you know, we actually had the existing window opening, pretending as if it was an existing window opening. Um, we didn't really like that. We got rid of that. We kept the lintel. Um, but per our previous meeting last week with the Planning Commission, um, a comment was brought up about that lintel. And, and I think we're in agreement and um, that we will be removing that lintel from above the door. Um, mm -hmm. So it'll just blend in more with the facade and, and keep the symmetry still um, while mm -hmm. Acting is just an egress only door. Uh, I am in full agreement with removing the lintel to downplay a door that you don't want mm -hmm. played up. Um, can yeah. I suggest um, that uh, you match the color of the brick uh, by um, going to someplace like Home Depot and bringing um, a brick sample? Uh, they'll match it exactly. And I think then the door goes further away visually. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will go by red red paint because they think red is most brick is red and it, it would <laughs> not do you any good to do that i would suggest yeah. you know uh matching it as close as possible then visually it'll i think go away so all right so yeah. that's my only comment is if you can uh, remove the uh mental so um wonderful does anybody have any other further thoughts before we um i guess um Adjourn because we're not going to vote on it. It's a courtesy review. No? Okay. All right. Very good. Um, Mr. Leon, is that acceptable to you? Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much for your understanding and I'm glad you like it. I'm very proud of the work that uh, my staff, that the architects and the civil engineers have done. It is a very good building and I'm very uh, looking forward to moving in there. <laughs> they did a great job, and I hope you do very well uh, with your business <laughs> there. Thank you very much, and thank you for your consideration. Oh, of course. That is wonderful. All righty. Well, thank you, guys. Um, so that takes care of that. Um, next, then, is uh, from staff. Do we have any um, thoughts from Frank or Chris? Or Greg, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, or even Jasmine, please, by all means. Anything from staff? I do. Raise your yeah. hand if you do. <laughs> okay, Chris. Uh, I want to thank you all for making the extra effort to attend our first virtual HDC meeting. I know it took a lot of preparation, and we really appreciate the extra effort. Um, I also want to thank our tech team, Brian Helms and Andrew Barnes, among others for preparing all of us so well for these meetings and then running these meetings. And because Brian and the tech team have done such a wonderful job transitioning us to virtual meetings, we are planning to hold the annual HDC training online. Wow. Um, we're going to be the first to do this for the uh, Maryland Association of Historic District Commissions. So I'll send you an email to try to select a date. It'll probably be a Tuesday or Thursday evening in June. Great, and thank that, you. That's all I have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Greg, you have any thoughts? You're on mute. Nothing for me tonight. Thanks, though. Ready? 
Very good, Frank. Well, I would uh, echo what Chris said in terms of um, uh, thanking everybody for this is this is a new way to do business. This takes uh, a lot of flexibility. This isn't something we would have even going back to February would ever have thought that we would have needed to be in this situation. Um, it is true that sometimes you you find out what are groups made of when they face challenges. This is the fourth virtual meeting that um, that I've been involved in and certainly with uh, Brian and Andrew's help uh, and IT overall as well as staff as well as <coughs> boards and commissions such as yourself. Um, we have worked through this um, in terms of um, the open meetings element of it. Uh, uh, this is available obviously on Zoom. Uh, if people do need to call in by conference call, uh, I do want everybody to know the Open Meetings Compliance Board has said conference calls do satisfy. Um, again, the idea is for people to be able to observe or listen uh, to their board members, to their officials, the, the folks who represent the community. And that's what people have been able to do. And certainly if we'd had public comment, uh, we have had uh, at least two meetings uh, where, there, where there was some substantial public comment. Um, we had maybe three dozen, pretty close to that, at the mayor and city council meeting uh, just on Monday night. So, um, so again, thank you all both for, for your patience. And this is a matter of working through something very new for us, but, but we're doing it. We're doing it successfully. Okay, very good. Uh, next then from the commission, <laughs> any of you guys have anything, thought, any thoughts? Mary Jo, please. Yes, well, I've been the chatty Kathy tonight, haven't I? <laughs> this is actually, um, first of all, Rudy, hello, and how nice to officially meet you. I was not at the last meeting, so hello. A second layout for Chris and Rudy. Because we had an application tonight that was a courtesy review that's been before us before, and your Rudy is new to our commission, I was hoping, Chris, that maybe wouldn't be a bad idea to include in our records the minutes from the meeting, even if it's a courtesy review, whether it's an application, so Rudy can be brought up to date on places that come before us again and again and again. I think that would make him more comfortable as a commissioner being caught up in the meetings. Um, because I think right now he's sort of at a disadvantage by being new, although we're so glad to have you. It's always great to have fresh eyes on something. And just a suggestion, maybe we could just help him. And I sure, think we can do that in the future. Us. Because we also could use a refresher sometimes if it's been a while since we've seen something. Great, that's it. Wonderful. Uh, anything from John or Mark? Nope. That's it. We're done. Meet adjourned. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.